class was extra credit and I wasn't really sure if I wanted to do it, but <laughs> I ended up doing it anyways. So my name is Emma Vena, I'm a senior and I'm planning to go to USF and I plan to major in studio art and creative writing. So, oh, it's also, I try to condense it to as small as possible. <laughs> Um, the title of my story is Colorful Blindness, and it is about two different people, one clumsy and the other one graceful. Beep, beep, beep. A bright green alarm, uh, bright green alarm clock went off. Xanthi groaned. It is way too early to do anything. Her hand shot out from under the blue plaid sheets of her bed. Her caramel-colored hand knocked the alarm clock off the table. It fell hitting the floor, shattering to a million pieces. She found a piece of paper on her bedside table. The paper had an address and a picture of the most polished boy she had ever seen. He had black hair and blue-green eyes. She was supposed to meet him today. She turned and jumped off her bed. The sheet that covered her flew off as she jumped out, bare feet meeting the cold hardwood. She rushed to the bathroom and threw off her clothes. The cool morning air sent chills up her spine as she turned on the steaming hot water. In minutes, she was done, quickly got dressed, and rushed to grab an apple for breakfast. She laced up her green high-top converse and looked at herself in the mirror. Her short, short white blonde hair with blue tips had a major bedhead look to it, so she decided to leave it as it was. She was late for school anyways. Xanthi grabbed her jasper green iPod and pink headphones, stuffed her book into her backpack, and sprinted out the door. She closed her eyes blue eyes. Xanthi was soon sent back to reality as she crashed full force with someone. Watch where you're going, she yelled. He looked at her mockingly as he got up, shaking the dust from his pants. His blue-green eyes looked at her blue ones. You're not worth my time. It's pointless to argue with someone as clumsy as you, he said, leaving her on the floor. She glared up at him, her eyes narrowing into slivers of ice. Jerk, she screamed after the boy. He glanced back and waved, his mocking grin never leaving his face. That's when Xanthi realized it was him. Beep, beep, beep. A bright blue alarm clock goes off. Dominic's eyes flutter slowly open. My, is it time already? He reached out from under the green plaid sheets, his cream-colored hands tapping the alarm clock. He found a piece of paper on his bedside table. The paper had an address and a picture of the most colorful girl he had seen in his life. She had white blonde hair and nice blue eyes. He was supposed to meet her today. He sat up, and the sheets that covered him slid off his shoulders. He stepped off lightly from the bed, his bare feet meeting the cold hardwood. He walked briskly to the bathroom and threw off his clothes. The cool morning air sent chills up his spine as he returned on the steaming hot water. In minutes, he was done, quickly got dressed, and rushed to grab an apple for breakfast. He laced up his black high-top converse and looked at himself in the mirror. His black hair was sticking up in all possible directions, so Dominic decided to comb it out and then tussle it a little. He grabbed his red iPod and black headphones, his blue backpack, and lightly put his books in his bag. He walked out the door, he closed his blue green eyes, and was sent back to reality when he crashed full force with someone. Watch where you're going, she yelled at him. He looked at her mockingly as he got up, shaking the dust from his pants. His blue green eyes looked at her blue ones. You're not worth my time. It's pointless to argue with someone as clumsy as you. He said, leaving her on the floor. She glared up at him, her eyes narrowing into slivers of ice. Jerk, she screamed after him. He glanced back and waved, his mocking grin never leaving his face. That's when Dominic realized it was her. Dominic sat patiently in the office, waiting for the attendant to tell him what his schedule was. He looked at the clock on the wall nervously. The girl from earlier was supposed to meet him soon, and he still remembered how rude he was to her. She took him by surprise, and his reaction felt stupid, but it was too late now to change anything. A rush of color brushed past him and stepped into the office. She took a seat next to the door, sticking her feet out, almost tripping the attendant. But when the attendant looked down at the girl, her feet were tucked under the chair, and she was looking through her iPod. The attendant handed Dominic his schedule. He looked at it and glanced up at the girl across from him. She looked at him with one brow raised. So, I guess I'm stuck helping you around the school, she said. Dominic stood up and extended his arm to her. She looked at it like it was a dead fish. I'm sorry we started off on such a bad foot. Will you forgive me? She smiled slightly and took his hand. Well, if I have to spend some time with you, yeah, sure, I guess I'll forgive you. Plus, your accent makes me smile. He chuckled as they started walking down the hall and went to their first class. So, Santhi was it? How do you spell that? With an X? Interesting. He looked at her and smiled. What, do you expect a cookie for the kiss-ups? Oh, sorry, I forgot you're British. Here, have a crumpet and some tea. <laughs> she smiled and playfully hit his shoulder. Oh, now you've done it. What exactly have I done? Do you want me to say it slower? I forgot that you were American. Now you've crossed the line, mister. But she was smiling as she said this. Both were laughing as they entered the classroom. Thank you.
<laughs> um, not a regional winner, but um, were you were a regional winner? No. I know. Well, I knew her, she was a winner of distinction. Um, I think you can tell why. Uh, good writer. I really enjoyed her writing when I had her in class. In fact, I was kind of disappointed I didn't get her this semester, but she went to that other class um, <laughs> that everybody wants to take. I think it's Phil called Phil in there. We did that last year. Oh, okay. Year it, oh, okay. So, uh, congratulations, and it sounds like you're going to continue your writing, which I'm really pleased with as an English teacher. Um, keep up the good work. 